do a quick summary of this this chapter and some key lessons so in the last canto we were discussing about um uh, niti and the two sons hiranyakashipu and actually briefly and then maruta etc so it seems that lord is always helping his devotees and killing the demoniac so this chapter opens up you know with the inquiry of so maharaj parikshit is inquiring that how can you know the lord be taking the side of indra and and killing the opposite that's the enemies and the lord should be impartial and why should they be fearful of uh, the asuras and taking sides of the devatas etc so upon that firstly the rishi that is shukdev goswami offers prayers that's a very important lesson that before he even begins to answer he offers prayers to his spiritual master krishna deva bhai and vyas dev so that's what we do every day we begin any service we begin it should be by offering prayers to the guru parampara because without the, the mercy of guru and the guru parampara um we are nothing and then he starts to speak that the lord is beyond this and this has come like at least 10 times in this that lord is beyond the material modes or the material qualities of goodness of passion ignorance he is nirguna that means he has no material qualities or he is aguna same meaning he is transcendental he is divya he is the controller of maya he is not under the grip of maya devi esha gunamai mam maya duratya many many verses the you know at this point is explained that he is the master of everyone all the shaktis are working under his direction maya dhyakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam so he cannot be under the grip of maya or rajagun or tamagun normally people distinguish between friends and enemies because of uh, different modes a pure devotee also has this quality that they are also above the different modes so they are also referred this word suhrida sarvabhuta naam is used here in i think twice and that word is also used for the pure devotees so the lord is not partial to anyone he is above the friend and envy mentality and whatever he does is for the best of everyone now like a teacher does best for everyone all the students but according to the one's receptiveness one becomes a devata one becomes asur one becomes a rakshasa or or yaksha very nice point so according to the degree of our receptiveness and our eagerness we will make spiritual advancement as prabhupada says in nectar of instruction it's a very nice lesson advancement in krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower is a proper statement and this one more statement according to one's receptiveness whether one be a devata or an asura mm-hmm. this is the ninth verse so in short the lord is not partial he is willing to give his best he wants bhakti yoga process to be taken by everyone bhagavad gita instructions of bhagavad gita are open to everyone it's not that it is reserved or it is a million dollar book only rich people can buy so krishna is, is again text 9 has lot of you know wonderful important lines in the purport krishna is prepared to give bhakti yoga to everyone but one must be capable of receiving it very nice statement like a teacher gives education to all but you know one student fails the class and one student tops the class 
is a teacher partial to the one who failed certainly not but they all have different degrees of receptiveness so he is not in the mental energy he is he is uh, so shivya goswami gives multiple you know points and then he says formerly maharaj yudhishthir also asked this question to the great sage narada now let me tell you that story so shivya goswami is telling a story of maharaj yudhishthir's conversation with narada muni that how in the rajasuya yagya shishupal you know was head was chopped off by the sudarshan chakra and he attained the sayujya mukti and we discussed that that was like an interim step uh and then later he went back in his original position as jay in vaikuntha loka so there are five types of mukti we discussed that also sarupya sayujya samipya salokya etc but a pure vaishnava aspires for neither uh, whatever the lord desires is He is happy, and then we know the story that why Shishupal was envious since since birth. It was like bring like a ass. He had three eyes and four hands, and it was told that um, you know, he sat on the lap of Krishna, and then it was foretold that the same person uh, on whose lap Shishupal sits and his two arms and one eye drops off that person will be his kala or or his death and then shishupal's mother now when she got to know that krishna would be the one who will be killing shishupal she asked my dear krishna after all you are our relative you know can you please uh you know forgive shishupal of his hundred mistakes so shishupal and krishna said okay so be it so but in this rajasuya yagya shishupal crossed all his limits and forgot krishna did remind him that shishupal you are crossing your limits you know 100 is about to come but envy is something uh, an envy from krishna envy is very very disastrous envy is very very deep rooted and the root of all envy is envy from krishna and uh, bhagavatam is for nit nirmatsaranam bhagavad gita krishna says go oh arjuna i'm giving this knowledge to you because you are anusuya you are non envious from atri and anusuya was born dhatatre atri means free from three modes anusuya means free from envy so when one is free from three modes and free from envy the divine lord appeared and arjuna explains the same point uh that how shishupal so yudhishthira maharaj asked this question how come shishupal attained sayujya mukti which is even difficult to attain by the yogis and gyanis then narad muni explains the same point that ultimately whatever happens is for uh, is by the divine lord sweet will and then there are multiple verses which tell that yes he was thinking about the lord uh he was thinking about the lord in a in a unfavorable way like kamsa like uh, you know all this thinking how can i kill krishna all this trying to insult him so text number 26 and there are a few verses on that theme that yena ke prakar somehow the other one things of krishna that is better than impersonalist that is better than a taste certainly but our process or the lesson there is that even if someone is thinking of in a envious mentality one gets so much result what will be the position of mata yashoda what will be the position of a pure soul who is thinking of genuinely serving krishna in a anukul way in a favorable way not in a pratikul way and we discuss the deeper meaning of anukul and pratikul anukul means oh spiritual master oh gurudev i will do what you say that's anukul that's the highest pratikul means okay i will do but i will do things the way i like i will do devotional service but i will only do what i like to do 
not what you would like me to do. So that's also anukul and pratikul. Anukul means completely surrendering to the will of the spiritual master, the senior Vaishnavas, Shri Prabhupada, and uh, giving up the false designations. Sarvo upadi vinir muktam tat parit vina nirbalam. Rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhaktir uchyate. That's the highest. To give up, I want to do this. If if I don't get to do this, then I will want to come for Janmashtami. Then I won't help in your program. Uh, this is also Pratikul. So, it's a good reflection. And then one very, very nice point, which I like. By rapt attention fixed upon Krishna, one is purified and thus one is delivered from the material world. Text number 26 purport as that. So, rapt attention in service. Not an easy thing, but that is what is required. Rapt attention, absorption, attention, attention in holy name, attention in the Bhagavad class, attention in in, in anything, being present um, in, in in good relationship, in any any aspect. Rapt attention is is always um, helpful. And then Finally, um, training to remember Krishna, and that is the goal, and that will be the consciousness at the time of death. And finally, this chapter, um, the story comes that you know why why was so the the background of Shishpal is explained that how he went back home back to Godhead, and then in the Shri Maharaj was inquisitive to know. What is the background? Uh, and then Narad Muni explains the story of the four Kumaras, how they were about to enter and they were checked at the doorstep by the, the two gatekeepers, namely Jai and Vijay, and then they um, cursed and they had to take three birds, Satyuga, Nikashup and Hrinyaksha, Treta Yuga, Ravana and Kumkarana, and Dwapar Yuga, Shishupal and Dantavakra. So, then this chapter comes to an end. And at the last, there's one more question. What was the enmity between the father and the son? How did Dhruv, how did Prahlad become a pure devotee? Why was Hiranyakashipu his father envious of him? So, these are some of the synopsis from this chapter.